Thank you for your uh, interesting presentation. Uh, may, may, uh, briefly, what people know uh, who, who have never read the Quran, what they know about Quran is the stories about war and fighting and the story about women. Could you uh, comment this to me, please? <laughs> war and fight. <laughs> yes, you know, there's a verse in the Quran, you know. Fight, you know, fight them in line, wait and ambush, whatever. In the ninth surah, Surah Al Toba, verse 5, has a very warring tone. It talks about making war on certain people. It's often quoted by people who have a grudge against Islam and say, see, Islam promotes violence. But if you look just before that, it's very clear, the verses just before that and after that, speak about people who have treaty obligations with the Muslims, peace treaty obligations. And then they break them and they violate those treaties and commit aggression against the Muslims. They were fighting for their self-survival at that time and self-defense. And so it talks about people who break their treaties and this is how you deal with them. You know, and it has a very bellicose tone. And when that verse was revealed, the tribes that were the enemies of the Muslims at that time, that were trying to exterminate this new community, uh, when they heard that very bellicose tone, you know, they, they, were, they had their spies inside Medina. And they immediately went and told you know, the enemies, the enemy tribes, you know, the disbelievers, so this is their relation game, they're coming at you. <laughs> Listen what it said. The end result was it led to the peace, peaceful conquest of Mecca. And very little bloodshed. Virtually none. So actually, the end result was peaceful in the end. But the long and the short was that it, so it justified violence only against aggression. And in that particular context, because you can often hear that verse recited, the fifth verse of Surah al Toba, just read the verses before and after. It talks about, the context is quite clear. It's about those who break their treaties. And it says about those who don't break their treaties, keep your peaceful relations with them and honor those treaties. Uh, and that's silly. You know, just to give you an example, in the Quran, some have tried to make out the case that the Quran endorses violence and aggression. Some Muslims have. And when they do that, I remember that in their argument they had to write that that verse that I just mentioned canceled 254 verses of the Quran enjoying peace <laughs> and only fighting in self-defense. You know, with the non-Muslims. 254 verses that had to cancel. That's a good indication of what the Quran really says. You know, to have to make that sort of massive cancellation, you be sure that it must be violating the kind of what the Quran uh, says in general. You know, the Quran says don't commit aggression. You know, even says you know if somebody if they seek peace, you seek peace, and don't worry about God. God will defend you. You know, even because a lot of times we think, oh, now that they seek peace, jump on them, now kill them, wipe them out. This is our chance. You know, the Quran says they seek peace, you. Seek you know, God is the best of defending. But the long and the short of it is, I'm just trying to run through this quick. The Quran really, as far as I understand it, and I think almost any objective reader would, if you look at all the verses, and that's the way you should approach the Quran, when you're dealing with any subject, get out all the verses that deal with it. Massive, you know, amount of verses, joining, only fighting in uh, self-defense or against veritable oppression. Uh, let's see. What was the other one about women? 